Good evening, everybody. I'm back. I'm your host, Jack Remington of Quintessence Productions, LLC. Looking at week 13 in the NFL. Last week didn't start out too well. Our first game we had was the Raiders at the Jets. Jets killed them 34-3. Bad pick. Second game, we had the Saints minus on and half hosting the Panthers, and they were winning 14 to nothing in the first three minutes. And then again, they won by, by 11 late in the game with six minutes to go. The Panthers scored twice. And, uh, they kicked a field goal and scored a touchdown. Uh, missed two-point conversion. They lose by three for the game. But we picked up a win. We had the Redskins plus three and a half. They beat the Lions. And uh, then we had the Cowboys plus six and a half. They, they didn't win, like we said, but, but they covered against the Patriots. So we're two and two, looking great, right? And our last game, I'm sorry, we had the Rams plus three hosting the Ravens, and it was 45 to six. Was, and the, the Rams are in serious trouble. So we finished the week two and three losses. And I apologize again for having a, a subpar week. The Rams pick, a, I should have picked a different game. But like I said, home dogs have not done that well this year. If it's not this week, the next week I'll have a, a compilation video. The, uh, the favorites are really starting to pound the dogs. Although last week the dogs did come in. The dogs came in uh, uh, eight, eight wins versus six losses. And the home teams pounded the, the visitors ten wins versus four. So this is the second best week they've had. Had 11-3 in week nine, a 10-5 a week eight. But you can see that the the home teams are finally, they're now 10 games ahead of the road teams, like I said weeks ago. The, the, this, for, this trend of the road teams winning all the games is going to reverse, and it has. Let's talk about week 13. So the first game is the Ravens minus six hosting the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers, they have one loss. The Ravens only have two losses. We're going to take the San Francisco 49ers plus six at the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I just think that the I just think that the 49ers had the personnel to slow Lamar Jackson down just enough to make him kick field goals instead of scoring touchdowns. And like I said a couple weeks ago, Ravens defense is not that good. They've been masked by this tremendous offensive output that they suddenly discovered. Uh, but the 49ers had that kind of offense. Uh, they can expose that defense. And I'm looking for a close game. Game number two is Indianapolis Colts minus two and a half for hosting the Tennessee Titans. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the Titans plus two and a half. Uh, people are really touting the Colts, but I just think Tennessee is a better team. They got the better offensive line. They got the better defensive line. Uh, Tennessee uh, did the same thing to the Colts. That they slayed the mighty Kansas City Chiefs. And when Tennessee did it, they did it in fashion when they just run the ball right down their throats. Uh, Colts caught the, caught the Chiefs on that Monday night. And they were just they were reeling with injuries, and, and uh, Mahomes got hurt. But I think the Colts are still overrated. And uh, I'm just not used to the Colts having – uh, any, any facts only of a defense. Uh, game number three, it's the Cleveland Browns, minus two. They're at the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a rematch. The, the, the Browns beat them 21-7. to seven. This is the same as Miles Garrett. He's the defensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns. This is the same same player that uh, he, he won't salute the flag, our great flag here for our great country. And he protests violence against black people. Where, wherever he's protesting, I'm not even sure where he's breathing protest. I know he's protesting against our flag. He takes a knee during our national anthem, which offends me to no end. And um, then he, he does this. He acts like a real, real putz. And uh, he, he's an extremely violent person. Uh, I know the Browns are hot. They're, they're, they've got some momentum going. But the Steelers, they, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they have eight number one draft picks on that defense. And they got the number three defense in, in, in total yardage allowed in the NFL. I think the Steelers are in a good revenge spot. Uh, Tom was job was on the line. Uh, I think he should have got fired four years ago when he tried to kick that Ravens run, receiver running that sideline. Uh, if the old man Rooney was alive, he would have fired him on the spot. Um, as good as the old man was, uh, Mr. Rooney, uh, he was a great owner for the NFL. He did a lot for the NFL. And his team didn't do anything for 40 years until Chuck Noll come along in, uh, in the, in the mid-'70s. And uh, Mr. Rooney, the old man, not the son, but the old man was great. He tolerated no garbage from his players, too. We're going to take the steal plus two. We're looking for an outright upset win here because you know, the, the two points are probably not going to come into play. Uh, the Browns are riding too high. I was just, I'm just not impressed with them. Game number four, the Denver Broncos, plus three, hosting the, the Los Angeles, I keep saying San Diego, hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. 
I know the Chargers need a win really bad. Normally I would take the Chargers because the Broncos just can't score. They've, they've had games where they've, scored, they've got shut out. they scored three points twice. I mean, but they had the Minnesota Vikings beat. They just had, they just couldn't hold. The Broncos are the Jekyll and Hyde team now. Uh, I think this is a good revenge spot for them. It's a division rivalry. They're a mile high. Uh, the Chargers defense is starting to spring some real leaks. Uh, they're not sacking the quarterback like they once were. And the Broncos have played really well in, in, in the middle third. Remember at the last week we talked about thirds of seasons. First third of the season, second third of the season, fourth third of the season. Broncos didn't. They were 0-4. They finally got, finally got lucky and won a game to go 1-4. And, and they were 1-5. I mean, they, they had a horrible first third of the season. By the second third of the season, they've been very competitive other than the one game against Kansas City. But they've been competitive every game. And then last week they laid an A only scoring three points. But the defense still played well. I just think that uh, this is a good spot for the Broncos to get a home upset win here, even though, dog, even though home dogs are not covering. So we're just looking for a close game and maybe even a push. At this point in the season, I'll take a push. So uh, game number five, the one I should have my head, head examined, is the Seattle Seahawks. Got their, they only got two losses, and they've both been at home, versus the Minnesota Vikings. I know I keep riding these Vikings, and I know it's Russell Wilson versus... Her cousins, cousins, cousins of, is the most inconsistent passer on any of the winning teams that we have here in the NFL today. Uh, but he tends to rise on occasion, and, and the Vikings kind of ruined it. They need this game, and if they, they drop a couple more games, they could actually drop out of the playoffs. This is also a scenario, and I'll leave this video up. Uh, the Vikings could finish 11 to 5, like the Patriots did uh, 10 years ago when he had Matt Castle and missed the playoffs. Uh, the NFC is stacked, the National, the National Conference is stacked. Uh, you got the Saints, you got Seattle, you got San Francisco, you got Green Bay. The NFC is stacked. And if the Rams get on a run, you, then you got to deal with the Rams, which I don't think they're going to. Uh, if the Panthers got on a big run, you got to deal with them. Uh, so right now, the, the the Vikings are kind of ahead. The, the Vikings are ahead of the both the Rams and the Panthers, but but a loss or two that could change. Uh, so they they really need this game. To recap, we're going to take. The San Francisco plus six at Baltimore. We're, we're going to take the Tennessee Titans plus two and a half. They're at Indianapolis. We're going with a home dog, the Pittsburgh Steelers plus two, hosting Cleveland. A home dog, we're going to hosting. A home dog, we're, we're taking Denver, Denver Broncos plus three, hosting the San Diego the Los Angeles Chargers. And we're going to take the Minnesota Vikings plus the three. They're at Seattle. And, uh, Seattle's one of these teams that they, they play better on the road. Uh, for some reason, they have not, they have not been played well at home. And a couple of home games they've had where they won, they won by one or two points. Opening week, they beat Cincinnati by one point at home. And there was another game where they won by one or two points at home. They beat the Rams by one point at home. And there was another game they won by two or three or field goal. It was very close. So we're going to try to have a good week this week. And I hope you enjoy the games. Hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. My granddaughter got to come up. We got to spend it. So Thanksgiving time with her, she was crawling around on the floor. There was no football that day, so uh, when your when your only grandchild comes up, you gotta you gotta set your priorities straight. So remember, this is entertainment only. Have fun, enjoy the games, and entertainment only. And good luck. See you next week. Thank you. Have a good day.